So, Brother Yasser, are you ready for the answer? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Inshallah. So, I'm going to mute myself and go ahead and answer on that misconception, inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, can you hear me first of all? I don't know if, I can, if my mic's working. Yes, your voice is perfect, mashallah. Your mic is okay. Go ahead. Um, first of all, my name is Yasser Arawi, and uh, I live in England. And my, I was. Um, I'm doing. I'm answering the misconception of uh, pedophilia. Um, my, po my first. My first point is that um, previously, and when Muhammad first started um, preaching about Islam, um, everyone used to used to be accused of many things. <laughs> One of them was him being a liar, uh, a magician. Um, it's doing bad things, forcing other stuff, and well, he'd been accused of a lot of stuff, but he was never accused a pedophile. Either of two reasons: one, of either Aisha was not being not actually being young, or two, it was the norm in society. Um, so that's one. Of, that's one of my points. And another point is that um, only recent, uh, like before, in the um, in the past, people used to measure um, maturity not by age. So being married or being eligible for marriage was not measured by age, but measured by maturity. So if you were mature enough to get married, by um, obviously the parents would make that decision. But if you were mature enough, you were allowed to get married. And it was only recently in England, in my country, where in 1971, where before 1971, were um, people um, the minimum marriage age was 12 so only recently it became to um, um, the age of 18 so you can consider your grandparents or even your great grandparents to be considered pedophiles so another another thing is nowadays other countries have um, the minimum age would be 21 so they would look at us in our country in England and say you're pedophiles. So it's diff So consider. So everyone has their own age limit and stuff like that. But that's my that's my point. And Jazakumullah khair. Well, listen. Thank you. Wa alaikum Jazakumullah khair. Well done, mashallah. Yeah. Anyone would like to comment on his? Uh, no. Before we do that, let's do Sister Noura right now, okay? And then we'll, we'll we'll comment. If anyone would like to comment on positive or negative, what did you see positive with Brother Yasser answer, and what did you see negative with Brother Yasser answer? So let's go with Sister Noura. Inshallah, go ahead, Sister Noura. Are you there? Yes. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum. Usually, when people ask me this question, I start. Uh, from grandma, my grandma. Uh, my grandma, she's now 84. She's still alive. Uh, so she she married when she was 12. Uh, she was very ready. She was mature. She, she was so excited. Um, patient, of course, uh, uh, she raised four kids with love and gave, uh, like taught them uh, good uh, manners. And um, they... She was a really good mom, okay? What's, why I start with this? Because this has happened 70 years ago. Imagine 1400 years ago. Like it was in her like age group was very, very okay. Like all they care at that time, uh, finishing like elementary school. Like the one who finished elementary school, wow. Like they can read and write. I have another grandma. She does not know how to read and write. I, 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 let's just talk about this because she she's still alive we, we discussed this me and her um so she explained to me and uh, yes this is what i try to explain to other people like think about you, what you're thinking about this time but think about 1400s ago it's very acceptable no one talk about it at that time you know like they try to attack us with something like it's like <laughs> you need to go back and then you, you talk. Uh, of course, uh, if you go to the story of Prophet Muhammad and uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, it's, it was an amazing story. It's a love story. Uh, if you go to history and want to educate yourself about it more, like, but, but there is a really very important wisdom behind this. 
she she born in islam uh, abu bakr uh, radiyallahu an raised her so she was very fresh like her mind was very fresh she she's the most like the mo- like most uh, one memorized and learned from prophet muhammad peace be upon him uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam so uh, she taught after him she taught a lot and and that's we when we get like most of the hadith and and the wahi used to come to to her um, house and when muhammad peace be upon him passed away like all the details we learn about his life his sunnah it came through her most of the, the almost of it so that's it thank you i can hear yes i can hear jazakallah khair may allah reward you so now for the ones who are watching this okay i want you if you would like to participate or write in the text i see some people also wrote in the text over here like uh, brother as says let me share this answer from youtube brother there are so many answers on youtube one of them that you can go to islamophobia series by uh, mohandis fadl sulaiman uh, he is also does uh, you know this series of islamophobia and answer on these things and there are so many other answers inshallah on youtube but let's not distract uh, our uh, people over here with uh, youtube uh, links and external tra- links inshallah because i want you guys to learn how to answer it's not the inform again the inso- information are important but the technical way on how we answer is more important inshallah so we have rather mustafa rawi biul he say the young mom in uk give birth age 11 2006 just recently and she he say that she was engaged uh, before oh he's talking now about aisha radiallahu anha that she was engaged before to another man Yes, that's correct. No problem, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. So this is great. Anyone would like to comment or to tell me uh, where is the problem with this? Uh, where is the problem? Where is the the misconception here? Or what is the, the, the mistake that people do when they throw this misconception? So I think actually, um, as we can see with uh, incidents and similar incidents, the one who was forced to marry an older man than her, usually she will be unhappy, she will complain, she will say, I was forced to marry this man. However, in case of Lady Aisha, she said, this is a wonderful mas- uh, wonderful marriage. He is the messenger of God. It's like an honor for her. She was happy and there is multiple incidents. She, she will tell happy stories. You used to race together. Uh, for example, she said, I used to be young and slim. And uh, when I raced the prophet, peace be upon him, I managed to beat him and after a while I gained a little bit of weight and then he said let let us race again and then he managed to beat me so these stories when you hear these uh stories is she unhappy were she unhappy about this marriage so herself she didn't complain about it Right. Why so, you're angry about it? So <laughs> al-mughalata here is mantiqiya with common sense. That's correct. Jazakumullah khair. Yeah. And I have some people who also uh, wrote in the text, mashallah, uh, I see the mis- this mistake in this misconception, I guess the assumption uh, that the age of 18 is the legal age. Yes, this is a great actually, uh, you know, analogy. And this is what Brother Yasser said. He said, you know, we, uh, we determine the age uh, we determine the maturity by age. Uh, this is what we do in our days, but it is the maturity is not by age, but it's actually by also the psychology and the body and the physical things, right? Uh, Brother Ibrahim, he says the mistake here 
uh, he gives the mughalata here. The mistake here is the comparison between nowadays times and place with the law and 1,400 years ago. And this is what Sister Noura said as well, as well. She said, you know, you cannot compare what we have now with what was in 1,400 years ago. Uh, Sister Sara, she said, uh, comparing, we are not comparing apple to apple in terms in timeline and what was acceptable and popular back. Uh, who also said that? Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I have to go a little bit up. Uh, Sister Dina, she said that def the definition on of pedophilia, when they say that the Prophet Sallallahu pedophile, they are saying that he has a mental health problem. So they are accusing a Prophet وسلم, with a mental health problem, which is like that he is lusting on a child, that all what he cares about is just to have sex with a child, right? And the pedoph pedophilia is misused, as Sister Nassim said. So now we know what's the problem, and that's great. This is what we really want. We need to put our finger on the problem. Where is the problem exactly? That's right. Jazakum uh, khair. So also, uh, Brother Yasser used logic and common sense when he said maturity by age. This is awesome. Sister Nora said that she gave an example of her grandmother that she married when she's young. I also give a, an example of my grandmother. My grandmother is a Christian. She's not even a Muslim. And she married 70 years ago when she was 13 years old when she was 13 years old. So 70 years ago, it was the norm for people in the East or the Middle East to marry younger and have children, right? Also, I'm gonna be talking about this in just a second as well. Um, time difference, as I said, you know, she said, Noura also, she used the analogy of... Uh, Sister Noura said, uh, also, she used the analogy of finishing school. Now, what do women actually think of at these times, right? They only think about finishing school, having a good career, so on. But long time ago, did they have schools? And the uneducated women, what were their uh, aim in life and so on, right? So let me go ahead over these answers, inshallah, real quick. Most of them, actually, you already answered but as a confirmation for you, inshallah. So we go with uh, the misconception of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, marrying, let's say, a nine years old, because that's the most common uh, hadith that it is used nine years ago, old, not six years old. The Prophet وسلم, has a unique biography, biography by itself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what makes his unique biography is that he's a human. So we as people are not supposed to make him as an angel and say, oh, well, uh, he married this uh, young woman and he shouldn't do that, whatever, right? Something is wrong. So they say about the concept of pedophilia and we need to define what pedophilia is. It is a mental health problem. It is not something that, it, that normal people would do, right? So we need to specify if it is wrong according to the law or according to the culture, right? Uh, so at that time, when the Prophet وسلم, used to live, it was culturally okay for young women to marry. So for us as people living in our times, who are we to judge something that happened 1,400 years ago? And nobody objected right? Just like Brother Yasser said, he said that uh, people called the Prophet ﷺ, uh, 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 you know, uh, an insane person, they called him a poet, they called him a soothsayer, they called him a priest, but no one really called Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him at that time, as a pedophile. Never. Even if that was not the term at that time, they never called him, for example, a child molester for example, or a raper. He, they never called him this, subhanAllah. So the other thing is that it was a law from Allah. Allah actually commanded Prophet uh, Muhammad وسلم, to marry a nine years old, this woman, right? As I said, none of his enemies said he is a pedophile or child molester. So we're not supposed to, like, who are we to come and judge him like this, right? If we go back to the Britannica Encyclopedia and we see what puberty means, right? Puberty means, that's an encyclopedia. It is a book that it is written from non-Muslims, right? It says that is the stage at which a child transforms into an adulthood by nature capable for procreation. That means capable to have the sexual act, 
Okay. So when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married Aisha radiallahu anha, she was in the age ready to conceive a child, to have sexual, uh, to have a sexual act and so on, or intimacy, whatever you want to call it, right? So Lady Aisha also, may Allah be pleased with her, was engaged before the Prophet, peace be upon him, when she was six years old. Subhanallah. She was uh, engaged to one of the enemies of Islam. His name is Uqba bin Mu'ayyat. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, came and he proposed to uh, Aisha radiallahu anha from her father. Now, at that time, when we say engagement, you know, they don't really publicize the engagement. So when the Prophet, peace be upon him, came and he asked to marry her, he did not know that she was engaged. He didn't know. So Abu Bakr did not answer him right away and he told him, okay, you can marry her. No, he, what he did, actually, he, he was quiet and he did not answer right away. away. He went to, uh, to Uqba and he told him, you know, he knocked on the door and asked him if he still actually... Uh, interested in Aisha radiallahu anha because at that time Islam came and he became an enemy and since then they did not open the subject of marriage so what uh, Uqba bin Mu'ayyad did he closed the door on Abu Bakr radiallahu anha so Abu Bakr radiallahu anha he understood that he's not interested anymore so he came back and he told the prophet peace be upon him that yes you can go ahead and marry her so he married her when she was nine and he he did not consider uh, he did not actually do the actual marriage, the actual intimacy until she reached the puberty. And some hadiths, they, they say that she was 12 years old, not nine years old. At that time, it was a norm. And Aisha radiallahu anha was not the only woman that he married that she was young. However, she was the only one that she was virgin. All the other wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they were not virgin. They were either married before, divorced, uh, widowed, uh, or widowed, subhanAllah. And so I tell you, for example, Lady Safiya, that she was a Jewish, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married her. She was 14. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the third husband for her after two husbands before, subhanAllah, right? And as Noura said, what were women doing when they don't go to school, right? What do they do? They basically go into labor, either like, you know, going for work in the farms or at home or something like this. And what do they expect or what do they dream of? In remote villages, all what they dream of is to have a good husband and, and grow with that husband, right? And have children. And those children are going to take care of her when they grow up, right? And they will take the legacy of their father's name. That's what they all thought about. They didn't have any schools at that time, right? So the woman, her dream was not to wear a white dress and finish school and finish, uh, you know, college and have a career. Her career was, or her dream career is to have a husband and good children. That's all what she really dreamed of at that time. Subhanallah. In our days, actually, like the average age for someone to get married is 23, 24, right? But in villages for the women, however, in the villages is 17 and 18 and sometimes even 16 in our days. So how about 1,400 years ago? It was even younger than that. If we look at, over here at the uh, age of consent, if you go to the website ageofconsent.com, right? And you will see the ages of our days, what are the countries that they actually uh, allow the age of consent or marriage? So we we'll see Philippines, a woman can marry while she is 12 years old, Japan, 13 years old. As a matter of fact, back in 2012, until 2012 in America, in Utah and Arizona, and there is a third state, I don't remember what was it, the age of consent was actually 13 and 14. So uh, Argentina, 13, Uruguay, uh, 13, France, 15, Ghana, 16. That's all in our days, by the way. SubhanAllah. If you think that Philippines and Japan is too low. Now, let's, let's look what Japan actually 
say about that? They say that the statutory rape is defined as sex with minors below the age of consent, right? That's what they think. That's what uh, rape is. In the Philippines, the age of consent is 12 years old. This means that sex with a child as young as 12 is not automatically considered child rape. Why is that? Because the child has to undergo a trauma or proving in court that the rape has occurred uh, against their will. Just like Brother Bilal said, Brother Bilal said that we have really beautiful romantic stories of Aisha radiallahu anha with the Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated by Aisha herself, that she spoke high of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now, if he raped her when she was 12 years old or 10 years old, whatever age was, she should be unhappy. She should complain, but she didn't. She was actually talking good stories about the Prophet Sallallahu The Philippine has the lowest age of determined statutory rape in Asia and one of the lowest in the world. The global mean, the, the global mean is 16. That's, you know, that's the average in many of the countries, SubhanAllah. So, we cannot actually judge people according to our own mentality and culture, right? If you look over here back in 2003, you see a bride in Romania, Romania, where it has the largest uh, church, right? And a 12 years old bride with her groom. And I don't know how old is the groom, but he looks very young as well, right? Uh, also in 2001, we have nine years old mother in Thailand in Thailand. That means she's ready to be a mother. She's ready to be a mother, right? 